Hey everyone, welcome to Skills Build Training YouTube channel. The topic of today's video is Visual Studio Code tutorial for beginners. My name is Salha and this channel is all about showing you how to become a highly paid IT pro really fast. Let's get started. In this video, I will try to explain and explore all the major functionalities in Visual Studio Code that you might need and of course those functionalities would make you efficient with your working environment. Visual Studio Code is the most popular text editor for especially for the web development but it does not mean we cannot work with other languages on Visual Studio Code. It is a lightweight text editor. It is a cross-platform operating system. So let's go ahead and let's download Visual Studio Code. To download it, go to your favorite browser and type Visual Studio Code. So the first link here will be from visualstudio.com. So click on that link. It will take you to the official website. So from here, download the Visual Studio Code. Here we have two options. One is stable download and other is insider's edition. So the difference between both is in insider edition, we get the latest development of tools from the developers of the Visual Studio Code, but the problem with that is it might not be stable yet. Yes, you may get latest patches and features in insider edition, but it will not be stable one. So that is why I'm going to download the stable version. So once we have downloaded it, go to your downloads directory or folder where you have downloaded it and double click on the file. All right. So once you double click on it, it will start to install it. Of course, it would give you this one kind of window. So here, just check on the first option, which is I accept the agreement and then click on next. Here you can basically browse and give any directory path if you want to. I would like to keep it the same. So I'll click on next and then I'll click on next once again. From here, I can check this option, which says create a desktop icon and then I'll click on next and then I'll click on install. Now it would start to install Visual Studio Code on my computer. Once the installation is done, you will see a window like this. Click on finish and then it will launch Visual Studio Code immediately. When we open the Visual Studio Code for the first time, we get a window which looks something like this. It is something like guide about where and how we can use the basic functionality of the Visual Studio Code. So first of all, here you can see that we have open folder option, which means that you can open any project folder from here. And then you also have the new file option, which means that you can create any type of file here. And then here in the, under the help option, you have all the helps like tips and tricks and all the necessary things here from where you can learn about Visual Studio Code. And then we have the customize option in which you could pick up any language like JavaScript, Python, Java, and then PHP, IR, Docker, and more. This is the general interface of Visual Studio Code. And on the left side in the bar, we have uh, multiple options. Yeah, so that's it from uh, the perspective of the interface. Up there, we have the menu, of course, from file, edit, selection view, these kind of different menu options. So this is the general overview of the interface. So now we will create a folder where we will be storing our work of coding files. Okay, so let's say I pick up a directory as desktop and there I create a folder then I would basically select that specific folder okay I'd click on it and that specific folder will be selected and once you have created the folder now you are going to create the file so there are two ways to create a file you can either click on this icon or you can right click and you can create a file or you can also go to the file option and click on new file and create a file so just give it a name here to the file whatever you want i'll give it a name as test.py py is the extension of python so hit enter and now this file has been created and here i can start coding 
So the purpose of this Visual Studio Code tutorial is not to do any sort of code in here, but to give you an overview and understanding of Visual Studio Code itself. So here you can see that we have a specific type of font size. So we can increase or decrease it depending upon our choice. So let's say if I want to increase the font size, what I would do, I would go to file, then I would go to preferences and then I would click on settings and from here I would go to the text editor and then I would go to font. Here I can increase the size okay and basically you do not need to save it uh, it would be auto saved and here you can see that now we have the font here which has been increased. Now let's explore the settings of Visual Studio. So click on the settings button. Here we have two types of settings. We have user settings and workplace settings. User settings are related to your settings which you will set for you and in workspace settings we will have the settings related to Visual Studio Code. At the moment it will have the default settings. You can change as per your need and liking. For example, if I search for mouse wheel and check its checkbox. Now what it will do? Let's go back to our file and press control and move the wheel of your mouse. So you can see that the text of the size of the editor will start to change with the movement of the wheel. We can also split the screen as well. So click on this icon and it will split your screen in half and this way you can simultaneously work on Visual Studio Code. So if you click it many times it will keep on splitting the screen for you. Let's change the theme of the Visual Studio Code. Click on the settings gear and from here go to color theme and now you can change any of the theme like you can pick any of the theme from here so let's say i select this one so here you can see that the theme of visual studio has been changed successfully so again click on settings gear and from here go to the command palette what it will do is that it will allow you to use shortcut to reach to a certain place for example if i write here python it shows me all the files of extensions which are related to Python. So if I exactly know about the file extension type and its name, I can simply install or use it from here without going through all the GUI steps. But at the moment, we will leave it here. So if I write copy here, you can see that all the commands which says copy appears here. It also gives you the shortcuts to use. As you can see that it is giving me the shortcut for copy command which is control plus C. Now let's talk about the debugging window. So click on this icon. Now we will debug our Python file. If I copy paste my code here multiple times and if I try to debug it, it is asking me about the debug configuration. So I will select the Python file. Now it will start debugging it. So here you can see that now it has debugged this file successfully. I can even set the breakpoints in my code and now let's debug the program again. Now you can see that I can go through my code by using these icons and can go to the breakpoints. Now let's talk about extension a little bit. To open extensions, press Ctrl plus Shift plus X or click on this icon that you see here. Here you will have the list of extensions and icons which you can install in Visual Studio Code. It does not come with pre-installed extensions. It allows the user to install only the extensions which are needed for him or needed for the related programs or problems. Here we have the extensions for almost every programming language which the Visual Studio Code supports. So here let's say if I type in here Python, here you can see that there is an entire list of extension related to the Python programming language. And if I search here any other programming language such as HTML, I have all the extensions related to HTML and CSS here. Now let's talk about find and replace tab. 
Here, in Find and Replace tab, we have the ability to find anything in our file. It just works like the Find and Replace feature of Microsoft Office, where we can find a word in whole document and we can replace that word with a new word in the whole document. So now let's go ahead and let's try to run our Python file. So when we will try to run our Python file, you can see that it has started to detect the Python syntax automatically. Now you might have to install some of the Python packages. And for that purpose, we will check on the icon and from here, we'll write Python. And all the packages which are related to Python will appear here. So install the one that you need. And after the installation of those packages, let's write a code of Python and let's try to run it. After we are done with this code, you have to right click on it. And from the list, look for run Python file in terminal. As you can see that our code is running and have shown the output in the terminal. And there is another way to see the output. We can go ahead and click on this icon. Here we have two options, run code or run Python file in the terminal. So we will click on let's say run code. And here you can see that the code was run successfully. And here it says run in that specific file and we've got the output. The next thing that we are going to talk about is Zen mode. If you get distracted very easily, and you want to have full concentration just on the coding window, there is a solution for that. Go to view, then go to appearance and then select Zen mode. Now your appearance will change with just a coding window. So now you will not be distracted and you'll be able to use it. If you want to come out of the Zen mode, then just press escape and you will come out of the Zen mode. Let's talk about some of the shortcuts. Control plus B, it will allow you to open the sidebar menu and close it. Sometime we need to go through our file which are opened in our project and they all exist on the left bar so we can use this shortcut to see them and when we are done using them, we can again press those buttons like Control plus B to close it. That's how we can keep our focus on our programming file. There is another shortcut which is Control plus Shift plus E and it will open up the Explorer. Then we have Control plus W which is used to close the tab. And then we have Control plus Tab which basically shifts through different tabs on your Visual Studio code. Then we have Control plus N which opens a new document or file. Then we have Control plus Shift plus Tab to toggle backward through tabs. Then we have Control plus P and it will open up a search bar. Here we can search the files which exist in our workspace. Now we only have one file here but in most of the cases we have lots of files to work on. It saves us a lot of time as it is easier to reach for the file with the search bar as compared to going to the folder and then looking for the file manually. Let's talk about the IntelliSense. In Visual Studio Code, we have a very good feature of IntelliSense. For example, if I write here print, as you can see, it is giving me the suggestion here, which is really helpful. Let's import math in our file. Okay, so once we have done it, like import math. And now let's use this. As you can see, as if I put a dot here, it is giving me suggestions to choose from um, a lot of different methods, right? This is one good feature in Visual Studio Code. It is so smart that it tries to suggest you all the related methods of the library that you are trying to use or trying to import. Let's talk about keyboard shortcuts. You can set different keyboard shortcuts. So go to settings and then from here, go to keyboard shortcuts. And here you can see that there is an entire list of keyboard shortcuts. You can pick any of the keyboard shortcuts that you want or you can even change it, okay, if that is your requirement. Let's talk about the terminal. 
Visual Studio Code has built-in terminal, which means you can run your files directly from the terminal. Here I have two terminals. One is Python and the other one is PowerShell. PowerShell is a default one of my system and other one is from Python. You will have the one which is default for your system, meaning for Mac, Linux, you will have their default terminals present there. If we press Ctrl and the Twiddle key, Twiddle key is right under the Escape key. Now, as you can see that our terminal has opened up by pressing Ctrl plus Twiddle. So we can do a lot of setting changes with the terminal as well. So let's go ahead and let's check some of those. So go to settings and search for terminal. From here, once you search for the terminal, you will find it. And there you can see that you have multiple options for terminal, okay? So you can pick up any option and you can pick up any specific settings and set it up for your terminal. So these were the things that we have discussed today. Hope you now have understanding of Visual Studio Code. If you are a beginner, then you know most of the things that most people don't know, right? So now go ahead and start coding in your favorite programming languages. Thank you so much for watching this and please do not forget to subscribe to our channel to help you advance your IT career.